Well, hello YouTube. Another great and glorious day in the shop building airplanes. <laughs> Airplane, not airplanes. Airplane and everything. So, by my attire, I must have got something in from Vans. And yes, I did. Not only did I get a hat, but I got the replacement spar. <laughs> so, that came in today. But as you guys know, we're going to finish up the right elevator first. We're going to get that uh, put together. It has been three days. Yes, time flies when we're having fun. So it's been three days since we have uh, pro-sealed the lean. Oh, almost fell over there. I'm, I'm, I'm drunk with happiness. Um, so we uh, pro-sealed the leading edge and also the, uh, the trim tab. And so today, we're going to take the Clecos out, clean them up a little bit because they do need to be cleaned up. And we're going to finish, uh, we're going to finish the uh, uh, riveting the leading edge, getting the piano hinge onto that, and then also doing the, not leading, but the uh, trailing edge, uh, getting that riveted together as well. So we've got a lot to do in the shop today. And then once we get done with that, um, we will start a dimpling and countersinking this piece and uh, then we got to get it into paint primed and everything and that that should pretty much be the rest of the day which will set us up perfectly to get started on the left elevator the left elevator so uh, yeah so stay with us you guys know the routine um, planes not gonna build itself so I got to get to work all right, so what I've done is I've taken out every other Clico, and now what we need to do, we're gonna Clico this up, but what we need to do is take your, your drill bit, don't put it on a drill, don't be tempted, you're not gonna do it any faster or anything, but don't be tempted to do it. Take your, with your finger, and then run that drill bit by hand through the, um, through the hole to clear out any of the uh, pro seal that's in the hole. Do not, you know, a lot of people will get impatient and they'll take this and they'll run it with, with the drill bit. And you don't want to do that. The goal here is to clean out the hole, not make the hole any bigger. And with a drill bit on a motor, you're, you're more likely to, uh, to not ream it out, but you're more likely to actually uh, make the hole bigger. That's not the goal here. The goal here is to just clear, clean out all of the pro seal out of the hole. And that's what you wanna do. So I'm gonna proceed down the line here, get all of these cleaned out, and then we will get the, uh, the pneumatic squeezer. I have a special tool, the special set, that's actually made for the trailing edges and I'll show that to you guys here in a little bit and we'll go ahead and get the first I don't want to take these Clecos out all the Clecos out we'll just take out what we need and we'll get the first one riveted in and then we'll take the Clecos out and we'll do the next set YouTube so this is a special tool and if you look at the way I'm going to close the dies if you look at the way the dies are closed see how it matches the wedge so it's going to match the wedge of the uh, of the leading edge here. That's what that's for. Um, and so what that does is when that closes, see how it's got the wedge in there. You guys might go see that. That should rivet those pieces together. This is a new tool now. What it is is it keeps a wire in here that keeps these things perpendicular to each other, and that's the way they should be. And so I'm going to give this a shot, see what it does. And uh, fingers crossed, we'll see if it forms a perfect uh, rivet. And what we're looking for, especially on this trailing edge, because on both sides, you're dimpled, right? So what you want to do is you want to create like an acorn kind of shape um, on, on this side here. Now, on the trailing edge of the rudder, I alternated the rivets because that you see the rudder this way so you see the rivets on both sides on this one i'm just going to put them all in in the same direction from top going bottom this is the bottom of the rudder so i'm going to i'm going to seal them in that way 
and and everything so let, let's put this tool first time i've used this tool everybody loves it that uses it we'll see we'll see what we get what kind of results all right youtube so there you go using the uh this uh angle tool you can get it from cleveland or one of the aircraft supply this thing is phenomenal i really do like it now you can do what um vans tells you to do on the leading edges i did that on the tail i had no problem i will tell you that this does make life a lot easier does a really good job at riveting these things are all flush all of these rivets are flush so that is great um yeah really really happy with it uh the only downside is make sure you get your distance set up you know you, it's not like a uh, crimper or a dimpler where it will stop i mean you got to make sure you get your distance set up with your wedge so typically what i did is i just put my wedge over and then i adjusted um i adjusted the uh, the adjustment so that it, it met it uh not tight but it met it firm so yeah so there's the uh, trailing edge, uh, all dimpled up with the nice dimples on the bottom side. Yeah, these are really, really, really nice. I'm really happy with the way that these turned out. Um, got a little pillowing right here. Not gonna worry about it. Um, that's why you put the Pro Seal in there. It kind of seals it up and everything. Um, but other than that, yeah, everything, everything came together real well and uh, very, very happy very happy with it now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and set these rivets here um with the these are blind rivets so i'll go ahead and get those set and then i'll finish up riveting this uh side to this spar end cap spar and that will complete the riveting for the uh for the elevator and then we will then proceed to get the piano hinge and all that uh set up for the um for the uh, trim tab, the elevator trim tab. So yep, yeah, hang out where we got more riveting to do. All right, so I was able to get the piano hinge done for this. So what I did is I separated, I pulled the pin out and then I lined the, the edges up and I used, I used these holes as the templates for these and it worked perfectly except for the very end the last two on the end on the inboard side because of the angle the holes are actually narrower um, on the rudder so if you do that you're going to um, be thick so you can you can match the holes up match the pieces up and use this one as your template if you wanted to do that or you can use the, the, the trim tab it's up to you um, you can use it, but just remember as you go inward, this is the inward, the holes get narrower. So you have to stop about three or four holes if you're using this as a template, and then you have to use the actual trim tab as your as your template to cut the holes. Um, but other than that, uh, yeah, you can, like I said, I lined them up and then I clipped them, you know, got them all lined up, and then I drilled from the from the outward inward, because this is the bottom, so this is the out part of the elevator, and I lined them up and I drilled, but then I stopped about four holes short um, of the thing, and then I used the actual trim tab, the trim, as as the template there. But that that is, that will allow you to do it. So I got everything aligned, um, like for like, end to end, and then uh, and then I clipped them along, and I then I drilled them out. And that actually lined them up. And I did test fit, and everything is perfect. Um, I was really concerned about this trailing edge right here. Right here, let me show you. And it's sticking out, but no, it is, it literally is perfect spacing all the way down. So I'm really, 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 really happy with that. I was a little concerned about how this, see how this bowls out a little bit. And I can take a little, little, um, little metal hammer and kind of tap that in a little bit but to be honest with you i'm gonna leave it alone i'll probably put some pro seal i don't like the fact that you have like the, these gaps a little bit of gap so i'll probably fill that gap up with a little bit of pro seal um to take up this space I, it's not gonna amount to anything but um 
you know, just for my knowledge, you know, keep water from weeping in there and, and everything like that. So I'll probably, like I said, I'll probably smooth this out a little bit, block it with, with a little uh, body hammer, uh, block it out a little bit, tap it. I don't want to, you don't want to get too crazy on this metal um, because you, you weaken metal by, by doing that. So, so I'm just going to tap it a little bit and then I'll probably fill the rest of it up with, with Pro Seal. Um, I will mark this as a, as a, a lookout point on my paint, on my plan. So when I go to paint too, I'll probably mitigate that as well. Yeah, everything kind of came together. Now I've got a lot of riveting. I got to rivet all of these. I got to rivet that piano hinge into that. Um, I do still have to cut. I kind of left the piano hinge instructions, told you to cut it. I, I left the, uh, the edges overhanging. So I'll, I'll cut those as well. I'll mark and cut those. And then I'll start uh, start my riveting, the riveting process, which, uh, yeah, I'd go, yeah, it'd be fun, good times. So uh, I, I still have to, uh, all these holes, it's very important that we run the deburrer on these holes because we drill them, so I'll do that as well. But uh, we'll get we'll get the parts uh, uncleacoed here and then uh, get them deburred and, uh, you know, cut these, these end pieces off. Um, I still have to, I kind of wanted to, weight to bend this. You're supposed to bend this about 15 degrees as bottom flange so that way it clears. It's kind of rounded uh, on the inside and it clears this. I, I wanted to kind of hold off on that a little bit to kind of see uh, how I'm going to do it. So what I'm actually going to do is I've got a, a piece of metal. I'm going to stick in there a rounded piece of metal and I'm going to bend it around there so that way it's kind of bent instead of just a straight uh, 15 degrees it'll be kind of rounded um and, and everything nothing major just a little piece of iron um that is rounded has a round profile and i'll use that to kind of roll these edges um around so that way it's rounded instead of just bent so yeah so uh, other than that everything else is going really well and uh you know i got to get this apart and then uh you know get these these pieces cut and uh get them final uh I'll get them, uh, get the final uh, um, rivets in. Yeah, <laughs> I had to think there for a minute. I will have to change out my rivet head. The one that I'm using is the uh, C, which is the aggressive, which that probably won't reach into here. So uh, I'll do that as well. So, all right, stay tuned. Hopefully next time we'll come back, we'll have this all riveted up and we will have one elevator, right side elevator complete. I wanted to share something with you. If you guys remember, my one of my concerns was, you know, we put these uh, the uh, spars, the foam spars in here, and they're and they are um, pro sealed in. So my and this thing has a lot of springiness. So what I did is before I started to remove um, the clecos and stuff to help keep it down, I went ahead and riveted the outer edges here as per the instructions. The other thing is, is as I was removing the Clecos, I did not remove all the Clecos at once. I did it in steps. So that way, and that way I was never releasing the pressure or the part that was holding down on this. I don't think it's an, an issue, but you know, why risk it, right? Uh, you can actually see where it kind of bled through. Um, so where we clipped through. So the thing is, is that, so what I did, uh, actually it's down here. So what I did is I is I released the pressure like say five, pushed this down out of the way and then put the Clico back in and then proceeded. Just to be mindful, I don't I don't think it's an issue because you you know you do have these riveted here and here and also on this side. So that does a lot of downward. But why risk it, right? It, like I said, when I released it, you can see it where it kind of pillowed a little bit right there. Um and everything. So so I just kind of took it easy. So just be mindful of that when you're when you're taking these off. Don't take all your Clecos off because this thing might have a tendency to spring back and it might separate. That might cause enough spring to cause it to separate from the um, from the uh, um, forms that you have in here, the 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 ribs and and stuff. So yeah, so just kind of be mindful of that. Don't do it all at once. Um, you know, do a little sections at a time. Uh, I don't think it's an issue, but hey, you know, the worst thing is you, this thing pops away. You have a piece of foam inside your your trim tab that's uh, that 
that's moving and everything. Now, I have heard people, let's talk a little bit about the pro seal, especially on the leading edges. A lot of people have said, oh, the pro seal on the leading edge and stuff is just to kind of keep it in place, right, until you can get it riveted. Well, obviously, there's nothing riveting these in. So, so it, you know, it, it's, it's actually used as an adhesive, right? So that's number one. Number two, the reason why you use pro seal is pro seal is, um, will constrict and expand with the heat and the coldness of the weather. Think about it. You're going up, you're going down. You're going from hot Florida here. It can get up to 100 degrees, Arizona, you know, a lot more, 120, 130, right? And then you're going to cold. So you're actually rapidly cooling and, and heating. So that's got to expand and contract. You know, I've heard, like I said, people have said, well, you use a pro seal to keep it together why, before you rivet. Well, if that's the case, then why don't you just use Clicos, right? No, pro seal is used to seal, pro seal, seal. And it has enough, it, it, it has enough elasticity, not rigidity, but elasticity to expand and contract um, to, to allow that and without without degrading or, or breaking apart. Um, that's why we use it. That's why they call it ProSeal. It's used to as the sealant for uh, pressurized airplanes. That tells you how, how well it works. So... But the thing is, is that you don't, you know, it has a point, right? It's a, it's elastic to a point. Let me see if I got a piece here. So it's like a rubber gasket. So it, it's got some elasticity. It will stretch to a point, you know, and, and so you, and I can tell you these things open up a lot more than, uh, than, than that pro seal will be able to maintain. So it's very important that you don't allow this to spring open on you or you're, you're going to be redoing it. I mean, there's no way, no other way around it. So. All right, enough of that. I just wanted to share that with you guys. And then I still, like I said, I got to get to work. All right, there you go. One right side rudder assembled. I'm going to get some uh, acetone and get the rest of this Pro Seal off. It does come off with acetone and everything. So I've got the, uh, the um, trim tab in place and everything. I'll do some more bending here of this. I got this. One of the things I would recommend is that uh, when you're dealing with these rods on these piano hinges here, round this outside edge. It makes it, it, it will go in a lot easier after I did that. Um, but yeah, this is in and uh, she's looking good. I mean, she, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's pretty much in line. So, uh, so really happy with that. I still got to bend this piece down and then it, what it is, is you got to bend it down and then down here. I got to drill a hole right here to run some safety wire. And I, I don't have a drill bit for that size, so I got to go get a drill bit for that. Um, so, yeah, so that's uh, so we've got the right side elevator done. It's kind of got a little snap to it. Yeah, I'm just kind of looking at that. Um, so yeah, so so the uh, right side elevator is uh, is in, and uh, she's going now. I'm sure I'm gonna have to do some uh, some some bending or some tweaking here along this piano hinge, um, just some truing up to make it because right now, if you notice, it's got a little bit of resistance, and then it kind of snaps over. So I will, um, and you know, to be honest with you, there shouldn't be any any kind of resistance, it should just flop um, the piano hinge. And I'm kind of looking, yeah, so what I'll have to do is just kind of go along this edge here and, um, and, and adjust those a little bit. They're probably a little tight. What happens when you squeeze these hinges in, I notice that they kind of get out of balance or out of, um, out of whack with each other. Uh, a little bit so um, so because of the just the squeezing you know causes the metal to, to causes the metal to uh, to bend just a little bit so I'll just go in to each one of these uh, each one of these here and just kind of clean them up maybe knock a little bit off of them and and everything pull this out some yeah nothing major just uh, just a little bit of tweaking and everything so uh so yeah so we got the right 
elevator is now done. I'll put that up on the uh, up on the rack up there, and then we will get get going on the uh, on the uh, left. Yeah, we got the left here. I don't think I'm going to be able to get that part uh, uh, dimpled and painted because it took a lot longer than what I thought today. So, um, hey, that's that's the nature of uh, of building an airplane, right? Is um, is, is sometimes it just takes it takes what it takes and, and everything so all right enough of that uh, I'm gonna clean up here get some tools put up get some air hoses wrapped up and uh, and everything and call it a day and then what we'll do is uh, next time we're in the shop we will pull down the parts get all the parts laid out for the left side elevator and uh, we'll get we'll get working on that <laughs> 